The series of economic and financial developments on Friday was a strange, bewildering, exhausting microcosm of why the global economy is at risk of a meltdown. It showed the odd interplay at work between the Chinese government's actions in the escalating trade war with the United States, the sober-minded global central bankers who have limited power to deploy and an American president whose public pronouncements often appear driven by grievance more than strategy. President Trump arrives in France on Saturday for a meeting of the group of seven industrialized nations, having set the stage for fireworks and confusion. In one dizzying day, he had seemed to be searching for whom or what to blame for economic troubles, first using Twitter to call his own Federal Reserve chief an enemy of the United States and then to urge American companies to stop doing business with China. And that was just while the markets were open. Later Friday, he said he would apply tariffs to all Chinese imports and increase those already in place. The global economy may yet turn out fine, most economic data in the United States has been solid. But if a recession and breakdown in international commerce happens in the coming year, histories of the episode may well spend a chapter on the Friday collision of official actions in the government offices of Beijing, in the Grand Tetons in Wyoming and in the Oval Office. It became clear in real time how the risks of an escalating trade war and the fraying of long-standing financial and political ties could quickly outpace the ability of central banks, the normal first responders to economic distress, to do anything about it. President Trump's shoot-first approach adds to the risks at a delicate moment, with major economies in Asia and Europe already teetering and policymakers' capacity to contain the damage in question. The escalation the unpredictability, the erratic nature of policy developments is central to what is going on, and these aren't things you can plug into an economic model, said Julia Coronado, president of Macro Policy Perspectives, an economic consultancy. Something is breaking. It's very dangerous. A single news cycle makes vivid how these different areas of policy can influence one another in unpredictable ways. As Friday dawned in the United States, China announced it would impose tariffs on $75 billion in American goods, going into effect starting September 1. New American tariffs on Chinese goods go into effect the same day. While not is totally cooperating. Mr. Hardin said the bank access from space was an attempt to make sure that there were sufficient funds in Ms. Wharton's account to pay bills and care for the child they had been raising. Ms. McLean had done the same throughout the relationship, he said, with Ms. Wharton's full knowledge. Ms. McLean continued using the password that she had used previously and never heard from Ms. Wharton that the account was now off-limits, he added. A complaint involving bank access from the space station is just one of a number of complex legal issues that have emerged in the age of routine space travel, issues that are expected to grow with the onset of space tourism. In 2011, NASA organized a sting operation targeting a space engineer's widow who was looking to sell a moon rock. In 2013, a Russian satellite was damaged after colliding with debris from a satellite that China had destroyed in a 2007 missile test. In 2017, an Austrian businessman sued a space tourism company, seeking to recover his deposit for a planned trip that was not progressing. Just because it's in space doesn't mean it's not subject to law, Mr. Sundahl said. One potential issue that could arise with any criminal case or lawsuit over extraterrestrial bank communications, Mr. Sundahl said, is discovery, NASA officials would be wary of opening up highly sensitive computer networks to examination by lawyers, for example. But those sorts of legal questions, he said are going to be inevitable as people spend more time in outer space. The couple's dispute revolved largely around Ms. Worden's son, who was born about a year before the two met. Ms. Worden, who had previously worked at the National Security Agency, resisted allowing Ms. McLean to adopt the child, even after they were married, at the end of 2014. In early 2018, while the couple was still married, Ms. McLean went to a local court in the Houston area to ask a judge to grant her shared parenting rights and the exclusive right to designate the primary residence of the child if the parties could not reach a mutual agreement, according to records.
she contended that Ms. Worden had an explosive temper and was making poor financial decisions, and she wanted the court to legally validate my established and deep parental relationship with the young boy. Around the same time, Ms. McLean apparently posted official NASA photos now deleted on her Twitter account, showing herself in her astronaut suit smiling alongside Ms. Worden's son. The hardest part about training for space is the four-year-old I have to leave behind every time I walk out the door, she wrote at the time. The social media attention aggravated Ms. Worden further, as she did not want Ms. McLean to claim to be the mother of the child. Later in 2018, Ms. Worden filed for divorce after Ms. McLean accused her of assault, something Ms. Worden denies and says she believes was part of Ms. McLean's bid to get control of the child. The assault case was later dismissed. A few months later, after Ms. McLean launched to the space station, their dispute continued to escalate. Ms. Worden noticed the bank issue. And when word of her concerns reached NASA, officials there immediately raised the issue with Ms. McLean, who fired off an email to Ms. Worden. They specifically mentioned threatening emails from Orbit, and accessing bank accounts not sure where that info comes from. Ms. McLean wrote in an email to Ms. Worden. Despite the turmoil, Ms. McLean portrayed no outward signs of trouble on the space station. The Spokane, Washington, native was an acclaimed leader with a decorated past, a West Point graduate who became a commissioned army officer and flew more than 800 combat hours in Operation Iraqi Freedom before joining NASA in 2013. She remains a lieutenant colonel in the Army and Stars and Stripes reported this week that she is on a list of candidates NASA is considering to be the first woman on the moon. In the days after Ms. McLean's email to Ms. Worden, Ms. Worden filed a complaint with the Federal Trade Commission, accusing Ms. McLean of committing identity theft though she saw no sign that anyone had moved or made use of the funds in the account. Ms. McLean, meanwhile, was gaining national attention for another reason. NASA was promoting the coming milestone of an all-female spacewalk, with Ms. McLean set to do work outside the space station with her fellow astronaut Christina Koch. But in a sudden switch a few days before the spacewalk, NASA scrapped Ms. McCain's role, explaining that there were not enough suits available in the two women's size. Saturday Night Live skewered the agency, with the actress A.D. Bryant portraying a disappointed Ms. McLean with her dreams crushed by poor NASA planning. A NASA spokeswoman, Megan Sumner, said the decision about the spacewalk was not influenced by any allegations about Ms. McLean. Ms. Sumner declined to comment about the other issues raised by Ms. Worden. In the days before Ms. McLean returned from space in June, Ms. Worden's parents sent a lengthy letter to NASA's Office of Inspector General outlining what they described as Ms. McLean's highly calculated and manipulative campaign to win custody of the child. In the letter, they included the allegation of the bank account intrusion. In recent days, Michael Mataya, an investigator specializing in criminal cases with NASA's Office of Inspector General, and another official have been exploring the issue, said Ms. Worden and her mother. Mr. Mataya declined to comment, as did a spokeswoman. The Trade Commission has not responded to the identity theft report, Ms. Worden said. The domestic dispute in space may be the first such investigation, but it is unlikely that it will be the last. The more we go out there and spend time out there, Mr. Sundahl said, all the things we do here are going to happen in space.